gopher? Alright. this exponent mean? What is it asking of us? Right? So let's start with this one. And I don't think I wrote the second, did I write the second part down, right? I did. Um, all right, so what does that two mean? Um, negative 20x to the third power times itself. Very good. So negative 20 x to the third power times itself, two times, there's the two times, we're going to apply it together. All right. Um, how about the seven here? Negative x times itself seven times. Okay, not quite. If we wanted negative x to be multiplied by itself seven times, it would look like this. But it's not so. Oh, it's negative x to the seven power times itself two times. The negative and the seven, the seventh power, they like don't see each other. They don't have anything to do with each other. The negative is just out in front, and, and it's a negative times seven x's multiplied together. Okay? It's really like that. You x to the seventh and make it negative. Okay. If we wanted to multiply a negative x by itself seven times, we would put parentheses around the whole thing, raise to the seventh power. Okay? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You see the difference between those two things? Yes. Okay. It's hard to tell if most people see the difference. So negative x to the seventh, negative x to the seventh. There's nothing else to do there. But if we multiply this by itself, the thing to realize here is that we have multiplication, multiplication, multiplication. Everything's multiplied together, so there's not really any reason for those parentheses to be there anymore. Okay, does that make sense? We're just multiplying straight across the board. These parentheses right now are just saying like, multiply these things first, but there's no reason that you have to multiply those things first. You can multiply these things in any order you want. So I'll put a, a, a negative 20 there so we know that the negative is 20 is, is multiplication, not subtraction. So I'm gonna take negative 20 and multiply it by negative 20 because I can multiply it in any order that I want. And I'll multiply x cubed by x cubed and multiply that by negative x to the seventh. And what's negative 20 times negative 20? Negative 400. What's that? Negative 400. Positive 400. It's positive. Good. It's got negative times negative is positive. 400. Right, how about x cubed times x cubed? Is that x to the ninth? Is it x to the sixth? Is it x to the sixth? Multiply them together. It's x to the sixth. Why? 
What? Why? How come? Right. Can someone tell me why x cubed and x cubed would go together and make x to the sixth? Because what? Yes, that's the most best answer that you could have given. Because you have six x's. There are three x's multiplied together. There they are. Here are three x's multiplied together. We're taking those three and those three and we're multiplying them together for a long string of six x's that you're multiplying together. Okay, so x to the sixth. Okay. That's different from x to the third plus x to the third. Right? Is that x to the sixth? No. Why not? Because what? It shouldn't be. Because what is this? What does that mean? X times x times. And that's not what this is. This is x times itself three times, x times itself three times. And if we're not multiplying them together, we, then we don't get six x's multiplied together. So it's not x to the sixth. It's not the same. All right, so that's x to the sixth. We're going to multiply that by negative x to the seventh. Can we multiply these together? We're going to, this way we've got a positive times a negative. What's a positive times a negative? Negative. Negative. We'll put that negative out here. Negative 400. Then x to the sixth times x to the seventh. That's six x's multiplied together. That's seven x's multiplied together. We're multiplying all of those together. How many x's do we have multiplied together? Thirteen. Thirteen. <laughs> That's it. Twenty-two, I heard, Derek, a while ago. Oh, yeah, on 9.1. OK. I have a question on this. Oh, yes. What's the question? Um, so how can you break up the negative 20 and the x to the third power? Like, because it looks like it's Like, between here, here and here? Yeah. Well, it looks like it's together the very first step. Yeah, this one. When you break it, yeah, when you break down into those two items. That's okay? Yeah, how is that? Oh, how is, how do they go from here to there? Yeah, because it looks like a like term, or like, I mean, that's just one term. Yeah. How do you? Well, you pointed at that two there, and when you put an exponent of two, that means whatever it's the exponent of, multiply that thing by itself twice. Right? So the exponent it belongs to this whole thing, which we call the base. So we multiply that base by itself twice. Okay. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. How about here from here to there? Does that make sense? Okay. Okay. Twenty-two in nine point one. How about if there's any more from eight point one, we'll just stay there for a second. Any more from 8.1? Good on that. Okay, 9.1. Are we going to be using the books right there, Um. Yeah, I think so. Unless someone comes and makes an impassioned speech or something else. <laughs> Yet. No breaks yet, guys. Huh? No breaks. Yeah, no breaks yet. All right. So, yeah, we gotta respect the, the parentheses. Um, let's see, what is happening to this parentheses? Is there any exponents or? Um, three x is getting times three. Well, three x's and just x is. If it was three x times itself, oh. we need parentheses. Yeah. Just x times itself. But like the parentheses, parentheses serve a purpose. That you put parentheses around the thing because you want to do something to a group of terms. Like, oh, sorry. Uh, like this one. Here's a a group of things that we want to raise to the second power. That's why we had parentheses around it. Mm -hmm. Put parentheses around this because we want to show that we're multiplying by a negative. If we didn't have parentheses, it would look like subtraction. So what are these parentheses doing? 
Why are they grouping together 3x squared minus 8? Is there any reason for that? There's no reason. They're not, we're not taking that parentheses and raising it to a power, or multiplying it by anything, or dividing it by anything, or we're not doing anything. Okay. So there's really no purpose for those parentheses. But what are we doing with these parentheses? They're doing one thing to the parentheses. What? Well, there aren't any like terms in there. We're subtracting it. We're subtracting that set of parentheses from everything else. Right? Okay. So if we're subtracting this whole set of parentheses, then I want to subtract everything in the parentheses. I want to subtract 4x cubed. I want to subtract x squared. I want to subtract a negative 15x. I want to subtract a 1. And then we collect like terms. When we subtract a negative, it's the same with addition. Okay. And it's not that this is the right way, but it is the traditional way right now that uh, we're going to collect like terms, and that would be to start with the highest power of x and then work our way down. So the highest power of x is what? Three. Three. Highest power of x is 3. Are there any like terms with negative no. 4x cubed? No, no other x cubes. Then we work down to x squared. You got 3x squared. Mm -hmm. negative. And negative x squared. So how many x squareds? 2x squared. 2. Oh, it's negative. Okay. Any x's? Yep. How yeah. many? 2. There's one x term, but uh, all together we have 15 x's. Any numbers, just constants? Negative nine. Negative nine, the constant. There we go. What is the answer? What's the answer? Answers up there. That's right, probably. Oh, the wrong answers up there. Yeah, it was like some K's and Q's. K's and Q's. Okay. Yeah, there were only K's. K's. Yeah, it was. That's one. Yeah, that's the one. Okay. So, which should be what I put up there? Uh, that's the answer for each one. Yeah, I did. I'm making sure. Alright, so if somebody marked that wrong, yeah, and your homework, make sure you mark it right. Well, the yeah, it works like this. Yeah, um, really? <laughs> <laughs> Is that why you asked, Derek? Huh? Is that why you asked? Yeah. The wrong answer was up there? Yeah, I was looking at Okay. Did you get it right? No, I got it wrong. I don't even know what I did. Okay, any other questions? Let's take out a piece of paper, put everything else away. X to the third, X to the fifth times X to the third. Let me show you two different answers that I get, and then we'll talk about why one of them is correct and why one of them isn't. Okay? So I get X to the fifteenth a lot, and then the other would be X to the eighth. So which is it? X to the eighth. Okay, now why would someone put x to the 15th? Okay, now, if, if I'm concentrating on these rules, there's some, some rules that are the, the things that guide me through this process. Why, I mean, why wouldn't I multiply 5 times 3? Just because I remember that I'm supposed to add 5 plus 3? Is that it? Or is there more? Because x to the 15th yeah. If you go if in your mind you go to this is this many x's and this is this many x's and all together it's eight x's, you're gonna do great in that regard. Okay? So not x to the fifteenth, but x to the eighth. Okay. And just be careful as you 
do this uh, for a long time because you're going to see these a lot. Uh, to not just fall back on memorizing rules, okay? Because there are times when we multiply exponents, okay? Like if I did x to the third raised to the fifth, you had to be x to the fifteenth. And other than saying, well, that's when you're supposed to multiply, can you convince me that that's x to the fifteenth? Yeah. How do we get 15 x's? Well, x times 3 times x times 3 times x times 3 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 3 4 3 times 3 times 3 Five groups of three x's multiplied together, all in a row, they have 15 x's. Uh, x to the sixth plus x to the third. Is that uh, x to the ninth? Yes. X to the eighteenth? It's right there. It's done. Okay. Right there. It says if possible, and this one's not possible. There's nothing to do. You can't combine them and, and put their exponents together. They're not like terms, so you can't put them together that way. So that's it. Right there. That is the simplest it can be. Any questions? What? Oh, I thought you asked a question. No, sorry. All right. M squared plus 3M squared. 4M squared. B4M squared. Would I just say that? I would say that. As long as the exponents and variables are the same, you can add those. <laughs> Can this be x to the ninth? Okay, so then is m squared plus m squared m to the fourth? No, it's two m squared. So well, it's not m to the fourth. It's not two m to the fourth. What? Four m to the second. Then when does that rule Which rule is that? Well, it applies here, but the way they get combined is that this is 1m squared and this is 3m squared for a total of 4m squared. Right? So they have to be the same number? Same number. Okay, this is not the kind of thing that I agree to. This phone going off and laughing, giggling, talking, talking. So what were you asking, Megan? When does that rule apply? Because I don't see how it can apply. Like how it can work there. How you wouldn't get to the fourth? Yeah. Okay, because if I add m to the fourth, what what does this four mean? M times the four times. Okay, m times m times m times m. Well, let's look up here. If it, if it works down here, if I can add them together and then add their exponents, then I should be able to do that here, right? Get m to the fourth. Let's see how they're not the same thing. This is m times m, and this is m times m. And if I multiply them together, then I would have four m's multiplied together, and I'd have m to the fourth. But I'm not multiplying them, I'm adding them. So adding these two together does not give me four m's times each other. Right? So when I come down here, saying m squared is, is like m squared is a, is a kind of a thing, kind of like an apple is a kind of a thing. If I have one apple, and I add three apples to that, I have four apples, not something else. Okay. So when I add them together, I kind of sweep them together into one place, collecting them. But they don't change. They're just, I mean, I guess in one way they change, like this number changed. But that just means how many times I'm adding up m squared. Are you going to add the exponents? Okay. When we're multiplying, that's when exponents would get added. 
Collect light terms when we're adding if they have the same exponents, the same variable. Um, but we can't add exponents when we're, doing, when we're adding like terms. We don't add their exponents. Uh, let's start here. What are we doing to this parentheses? We're doing what? Distribute to two. Two x squared plus two x to the third minus three x to the fifth. Yeah. Can't make it any smaller. Can't make it any smaller. I can't simplify it anymore. The only other thing we might do, we don't have to do, is to write it in descending powers. So this would be negative three x to the fifth. That's the highest power. Plus two x cubed. That's the next highest power. Plus two x squared. That's the lowest power. So as you score these, remember it's four points a question. So that means this this quiz is worth how much? Sixteen. Well, four, six. On each question, sixteen. On each question, it's four points. Two just for writing it down. The third point for trying. The fourth point for three. Right. Okay, so score all those, no. write a total at the top, come around. Did you write down the problem, they only wrote down the answers, is that the top or is that still good? If they just wrote down the answer, if the answer is right, then that's okay. If it's not? If it's not right? If it's right, it's right. Oh, I guess if it's kind of close. No, I mean, you can solve it. Oh! 
together maybe you know maybe you could guess it maybe you're not sure so we're just going to start together i'm going to give you a, a, a way to visually see uh, exactly what to do okay um yeah oh no that's what we're working towards so let's go back to our algebra tiles and let's just review real quick uh, what everything means. Um, let, me, let me say a little bit more about this. What we're going to do with our algebra tiles is represent this multiplication uh, just like we represent this multiplication right here. Like let's look at uh, 3 times 5 using the kind of multiplication we're going to use here. We're going we're to represent it as a rectangle. Okay. The three we're going to represent by this. Hold on, there you go. Okay. One, two, three on this side. And then five on this side. Okay. Something confusing? Yes. Yeah, I don't know. So we make a rectangle that's three by five in its area represents the product of three and five. Okay. So the area of this rectangle is how much? 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. 15. Let's put one there, like put one in front of you. When I come around, I want you to show me two. Can you show me two? I can show you two. Don't get tricked. I'm sure you two. It's not too difficult. There's two, I see two there. There's two. There's two. Okay. Okay, I got two. If you have two. Right, there's two. Not two. Okay. And can you show me? Now, when I say this, don't worry about any symbols or anything. Just worry about what's the result. Can you show me uh, two plus three with your tiles? Two plus three. Don't take some tiles and make them into a plus sign. That's not what I'm looking for. That's not what I need. Very simple. There we go. Yes. Okay, so what is 2 plus 3? Five. It's 5. Why? We got 2. Plus just means add or, or, or group together 3 and 2 of these tiles. Okay? Alright. So let's put all those back. 
Now show me x. Can you show me x? Just x. X. I have it labeled up there. Show me a rectangle that is x in area. Yeah? Yeah, I even have the one that says that. Yeah. Oh.
multiplication. So we're going to do some multiplication again. Just going to remind you. We're going to do a multiplication of 5 times 4. 5 times 4. Now multiplication, remember, is going to be represented by a rectangle. A rectangle that is 5 by 4. Right? You know how to find the area of a rectangle, right? Mm -hmm. Like the area of this room, we measure one side of the room and another side of the room. We multiply this say, length by this width, and we get the area of the room, like how many squares of uh, that size would fit in one. Okay. So let's do 5 times 4. Can you show me 5 times 4 in a rectangle? Can you do that with your squares? Just 5 times 4. See if you can do 5 times 4. 5 times 4? 5 times 4 as a rectangle. What's rectangle? Oh, this one. We're going to represent it as, an ang as, an, as, a, as a rectangle that has an area of 5 times 4, an area of 20. Right? So this is not working. This is 5 right here. 5. And we got 4 here. There's 4 of them there. Okay. Now these aren't really, these don't really count as towards my total. The, the only stuff that counts is inside here. Right? But this helps me see how long each thing is. OK, so 5 times 4, so that the, uh, the product of 5 and 4 will be 20. this rectangle right here. And I can show that by creating this rectangle right here. And then, oh, that's 5, 5, four, OK. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Obviously, the area of that is 20. 5 by 4, 5 times 4. So show me 3 times 3 in that same kind of a way. Yeah. To figure out this other system. 
can. Times five, twenty-five. Six times six. Eight. What shapes are these making? Squares. squares. So we call them square numbers. Four, nine, twenty-five, thirty-six, forty-nine. Like if we were to represent them as rectangles with areas of whatever the areas are, or if you have something in this, can you give it back? Um, all right, so can you show me, now that we've got the idea, can you show me 2 times x plus 1? It's just like 3 times 3 or 5 times 4, but it's 2 times x plus 1. So on one side you have to show x plus 1, on the other side of the rectangle you have to show 2 and the actual multiplication is the rectangle that you have two times deck those two sides. So just like we did before with 5 and 4, 5 times 4, we made one side 5 and the other side 4. So in this case, we're going to make one side 2 and the other side x plus 1. So make this side 2, make this side x plus 1. Okay, so that's just setting it up. This is the actual place where the product will be found. So we need a rectangle that fills up this space. It'll be two. Well, there's two x's. And then you add one. Two ones. Oops. What's happening? There's three x's. Two ones. Okay, I'm confused. What are you confused about? Everything. Please elaborate. Use actual helpful words. Well. Give you five seconds to elaborate. I'll be fine. I'll be or you didn't care enough. How, how did you? Yes. So how did you make like that square three? three. Oh, what are you doing? Oh, that square three. What do you mean? So one x one x one x one stack. Why are you doing that? It's okay. Okay. So grab all of this and move it out of the way for a second. I was setting up the multiplication on, on this, just like I did here. I'm just putting 5 along this side and 4 along this side, so I know how big this rectangle needs to be. Yeah. If I take oh, a... You're building it on the inside. Yes. Oh. Building it on the inside. The stuff on the outside only matters for like measurements of the sides of the rectangle. Okay, so I build this rectangle that is 5 by 4, and the area inside would be... The product, 20. Okay. The same goes here. If I build or, or help myself measure the rectangle on the outside and then build it on the inside, this stuff is going to go great. Okay. Then only the stuff inside this gray workspace 
is, is the actual product. Okay. But does it look like a square? Doesn't have to be a square. Okay. okay. What's represented in this rectangle? Two x to the power of two. No. It's two x plus two. Plus two. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Where do you get powers? Oh. How else can we get 2x plus 2? What do we, like, if you saw this, and then you saw this right after, what would you say the person has done? Distributed. Distributed. So we have a visual representation of distribution. Oh. Distribution says we take the 2, multiply by x. Look, this 2 yeah. got multiplied by x. There's the 2 times the x. Yeah. And then the 2 gets multiplied by the 1. Well, here's 2 times 1, 2 times 1, 2 by 1. 2 by x, 2 by 1. Okay, so we get the distribution. You see that the 2 gets multiplied by the x and by the 1, by everything. Okay? Okay? Let's do another one. Just a simple distribution. Another one of these. And I'll have somebody, uh, I'll pick somebody to come up there and show us how it's done. So let's do this one. 4 times 2x <laughs> plus 3. Oh, okay. You saw how I did it here? Mm -hmm. Take one side, one of the factors, the other side, the other factor, mm -hmm. and then build the rectangle inside. So she's doing four right now. This side is four. Mm -hmm. okay. The bottom side, she's going to just measure it out. She's just measuring out how big this rectangle is going to be. There's two X. Nathan? Two X plus three. Okay. Now, have we done any multiplication yet? No. No? Okay, so what, is the, what does it look like to do the multiplication? Fill it in. Fill it in. So could you fill it in? Fill in that rectangle? She's making a rectangle that on one side is 4, and on the bottom side is 2x plus 3. multiplied just with these blocks, she's multiplied 4 times 2x plus 3. Mm -hmm. So here is the product. Right. And what's the product? 8x, 8x plus 7. Plus 7? I mean, 12. <laughs> 12. Okay, which is Exactly what you get when you distribute the 4. You distribute the 4 to 2x, you get 8 of those x's. Distribute the 4 to 3, you get 12. Okay? Does that make any sense? Yes. Okay. Now let's do, do something a little more. Let's do uh, three um, times x squared plus two x plus two. Oh god. So on one side we got five. On the other side we got x, two x, three x plus two. 
5 times 3x plus 2. So, and we'll multiply this by 5. Two times three times four times five. So we have five groups of three x's, so that's fifteen x's. Yep. And then times one, times two, times three, times four, times five. And all together, what do we have? Fifteen x plus what? 10, which of course is what we would get if we distribute. Okay, so here's here's the new thing. It's just distribution, right? I'm just showing you like a picture of distribution. Picture of a rectangle as multiplication. The rectangle represents multiplication, right? Yes? Agreed? Rectangle, multiplication, the area of the rectangle is the product. All right. So I'm going to help you build this next product. Let's make this one x plus 2 x plus 2 times x plus 3. x plus 2 on one side, x plus 3 on the other side. Now, we're going to fill that in. So we need a rectangle that is x plus 2 on one side, on this left side, x plus 2 on this side. So it has to, to have a length of x plus 2 on this side. And then a length of x plus 3 on this side. You've got to perfectly mm -hmm. fill that in. So use the tiles that you have. Okay, uh, so most everybody has done this, which is perfect. It's great, I didn't even prompt most people to do that. This is a rectangle. So where's a rectangle? It's a rectangle that's x by x. That's exactly right. Okay? Now, right here, this is 3 by x. 3 times x. Okay? So stacking up a bunch of these will never be exactly right. Okay. Over here, there's 1 times x, 2 times x, 3 times x. Right here, we have 1 times x on this side, 2 times x. And right here we have something that is 2 by 3. So all together, what do we have inside this gray workspace? We have the x squared. Yes. One. What x squared? Plus. What else do we have? No, it's okay. They just make it. Just make sense. Any X's? Um, yeah. Four, one, two, three. Five, five X's. X's. <coughs> and six ones. And six ones. Okay. So what we've seen just now is how would we multiply X plus two by X plus three? Well, hey, we took the, the x times the x, and x times x is x squared. x gets multiplied by x, and we get x squared. Here we took the x times the 3 and got 3x. That's x times 3 is 3x. Okay, now we move on to the 2. 2 times x. 2 times x is 2x. Yeah. 
and 2 times 3, 2 times 3 is 6. x squared plus 5x plus 6.